Yo, what's going on guys? Savage here. Thank you guys again for checking out the series. The point of the series is not to post high kill gameplay because one, there's plenty of YouTubers that do that. And two, that's not the best way to learn. If you guys just watch me run around getting kill after kill after kill, and we don't actually explain the process of the killing, how are we gonna learn as players? So guys, in this video, we are breaking down a viewer submitted gameplay to me that was sent to me via Discord. If you guys wanna submit your gameplay, make sure you join our Discord and submit it in the submissions page. But again, we'll be breaking down some duo gameplay. This is something we don't do too often. We don't get too many duo submissions, so I love it when we do. But anyways, if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel, join the Wolfpack today. Also, again, join our Discord server. Link that will be in the description. And if you wanna come over to our Twitch community, make sure you follow me over on Twitch and we play with viewers every day. But again, guys, Warzone is an ever-changing battlefield. Every time an update comes out, they either break something, they fix something, they change something, or they change the map entirely. So we all, as players, we have to adapt. And that's the whole point of any battle royale, whether you're talking about PUBG, Fortnite, Apex, Warzone. Adaptation is very, very important. So make sure you guys are taking the advice that I'm giving and you're utilizing it in every single game. You want to make all of this become second nature and not something you have to think about because I, for one, don't think about this throughout my gameplay. Again, it's just second nature. But guys, without further ado, let's dive into the video. All right, so here we are with another, just like our video yesterday, here we are with another plane that's flying over Quarry and we're going to stretch the flight all the way past airport. And also they're going for search objectives. So I love that. Again, guys, the faster you get your loadout, the faster you can get it. Then you can also get your ghost class when the free loadout drops. His teammate can't make it, and again, guys, don't beat yourself up. That's a far float. I don't know if I could make that, okay? That's a very far float. So right now, he's going to throw an audible. Again, guys, if you're focused on an object and you have to throw an audible, throw an audible. Don't just stay tunnel vision on that one objective, especially if your team's going to land short. If your teammate can't make it, find another area. There's plenty of objectives to go after. I'll get, I'm I'm that that car. I can definitely make that car. All right, so I like that. So they're sitting there. They're bantering back and forth. They're trying to come up with a game plan because... Uh, his teammate knows he's not going to make it. And again, that's a far float. I don't know if I'd make it. And you don't want to sit there and just parachuting the whole time because you're going to get shot out of the air from someone at airport and or hangars, right? So I like the fact that he's going for the vehicle so that he can grab it, grab his teammate, and get to the objective. Now, my video yesterday, I said try to avoid taking vehicles to compounds far away because if other people didn't make it there, they're going to be aware of you because you show up in a vehicle, but you have no idea if they're there. So you kind of put the enemy team at an advantage. Just make sure when you arrive at the compound, you scan the area, you're paying attention to whether there's doors open, whether there's windows busted, whether the buy station's been used, things like that, and try to make sure that you're clear. All right, so you have a helicopter coming up behind you, and they're probably going to try their best to splat you. So try to get inside as fast as possible. Unfortunately, these guys are flying above you. Um, I don't really know where they're going. I guess the bunkers. I would imagine they were going for the search objective. Remember, everyone's starting to go for search objectives. Everyone's starting to go for objectives. People are learning, so make sure you're trying to race this guy up there to grab that thing, right? You don't want him or his teammate to bail out of the chopper and grab that search before you do because now you've wasted so much time driving out here. Um, it's going to be very hard for you to find a shit ton of money. So me in this position, I would instantly work my way upstairs. I wouldn't loot. I wouldn't grab shit. I'm pretty confident with my pistol shots, but that's just me. Um, I'm going to try to get this objective as fast as possible. Now, when you land around areas like this, I love this part of the map. I absolutely love this part of the map because you can rotate the bone yard and there's so many kills in bone yard. You can rotate the storage. There's so many kills in storage. I really am a huge fan of this. Question. Like he knew where he was. Was it a different building? Yeah. Maybe let's Oh my God, it's semi-auto. Damn it. All right, now we're in a position. We got the guy's armor cracked. Um, right now he's by himself, and he probably doesn't have plates because it's early in the game, right? I'm pretty sure that guy's dead because his body's kind of ragdolled to the ground. But I know that he got killed by the King Bounty. How do I know that? Because, well, one, again, his body ragdolled, and two, the King Bounty is pushing up to that body to loot. So I like the fact that Rick's over here. He's trying to get close to the enemy. He's playing the wall. That way, when the King Bounty does try to go loot that body, he can get the easy kill. Um, If I were you, Dup Dude, I would be pushing with your teammate. Not the exact same area. I would definitely use these rocks to try to push the other side. But that way, you can put shots on the enemy at the same time from two different angles. And there he is right there. He showed up on thermal at the last second. Um, don't, don't, don't. There's one guy. There's one guy. 
All right, unfortunately, right now they're separated. I'm not a huge fan of the separation. Why you um, not hear me? Because I told you that I was getting shooting. You, you don't even go to the scavenger. The scavenger's near me. Yeah, I know. All right, so I'm not a huge fan of them pushing, and right now they're having a little they're having a little bicker, and honestly, rightfully so, in my opinion. I like that Rick pushed the wall to get the kills. At the end of the day, I do stress to you guys that search objectives are important. However, if Rick would have lost that fight, if that King Bounty would have had better guns and better gunplay, you'd now be down a teammate. Then you would have to approach this search objective by yourself without a teammate um, and hopefully win that 1v1 fight. So I do agree with Rick in this. I know I know, I always stress go for objectives first, but if, if there's an immediate fight going on right now, there's no problem going up there, pushing them falling back get the search you just passed up and then going for the next one so i would have definitely pushed with my teammate granted if you've been playing together for a while and you know your teammate can handle his own shit, then that's fine if i play with other players that i'm confident in i'll go ahead and grab the search just like duck dude did because i know my teammate's going to handle whatever the hell is going on because he's a good player now that may be the situation that's fine but guys again from the viewer standpoint try to stay near your teammate while they're in a fight now we've got $17,000 and we still have another objective to do. So we can possibly get two self reses um, and a loadout. And that's kind of what I would focus on. All right, he's got a UAV. Go ahead and buy your self res. Don't leave without it. It's something you really, really want. He bought plates instead. Um, that's up to you if you want to buy plates. I, for one, think that self res would have been a little bit more important because you're still in storage town. You're probably fine. You know the couple plates you were missing within these loot boxes basically all right so as i said in my video yesterday i love going for bounty objectives when it's an airport area because nine times out of ten there's going to be an enemy in airport and it's going to be an easy kill because you know where he's at and he has no idea where you're at it puts you at the advantage grabbing the bounty so why not grab the bounties why would you run around the map and not grab any objectives might be stuck in the top now, when enemies have the bounty on them, they're going to play the high point, right? They're going to sit in an area where they can head glitch you and wait for you. I love the fact that he's using Tracker. Tracker is an awesome perk. I swapped Amps out for Tracker a while ago. One of the best decisions I ever made for my gameplay personally. Amp is still awesome to use if you prefer that. But now he knows exactly where this guy's at. And hopefully he'll be able to kill him. Hello, over here. Let's see him. No. Nice. Okay. So let's rewind a little bit and discuss this fight and what he should have done and how he should have done it differently. So we got we're ADS on him right now. We should instantly start shooting at this guy. Don't even give him a chance to think. However, um, Doug dude does take a second to think and hesitates. Now, we have the hits. We don't know if this guy's got a teammate. And you're putting yourself in a position by just running straight at the door. In this area, I would run to the left of the doorway for multiple reasons. One, it's going to put him out of position where he's got a sidestep in the open. And then you can put shots on him because he's more damaged than you are. You running straight at him is giving him an opportunity to make it an even playing field. And if his teammate pops out of somewhere, you're going to die. So I would definitely play this wall. You can either A, mount to get some really good shots off or B, just wait for him to try to find you. And that's exactly what happened. His teammate comes out. They both tagged you at the end. Um, your teammate luckily went on the right side and was able to put shots on him from a different angle. Not much more of a different angle, but again, when people are shooting at you, the tunnel vision down that doorway, and if your teammate comes up from the right side of the wall, that's a nice GG. So now we have our free loadout stash right next to us. I'll go ahead and get ghost class, and we also have 20 grand. All right, so right here, I would go ahead, rotate the buy station first, and then grab my ghost class coming out, right? I want to beat the circle timer. I want to beat the circle. So I'm going to go ahead and buy first. Once I buy all my UAVs and whatever else you want, I would then rotate and get my ghost class. Um, and then work my way back. So at that point, sky's the limit. You can go ahead and come back through airport, hit the garage, and go for the bounty. I like the fact that going for bounties, keep at it. A lot of people are like, Savage, I went for a bounty. And, and I only got one kill. I didn't, and I didn't win. You got to keep going for the bounties. Don't just do, just don't think you're one and done. Keep going for it. Give your brain something to work for. Again, if you don't have an objective, players tend to run around aimlessly in a circle. Avoid that by going for objectives. Keep yourself focused on something. All right, whether you want your ghost class or not, it's completely up to you. If he wants to go to that buy station right there, that's fine. If that's the decision that they make together as a team, I'm fine with that. Um, plus, it's next to the bounty, so it's not a terrible decision. I, for one, would want my ghost class, um, but that's up to you. Wait, are you okay, 
Nah, I was playing the Rick. Oh yeah, I'm gonna put that in, dude. Right there, right there. Plates. UAV. I don't need plates. And I, well, I've got three UAVs. You've got three. I can't, I can't take it. Get that, get that. Right, right. Uh, start it, start it. Uh, I can't take anything near the sport, Arjun. Start the UAV. Oh, all three. Yeah. There we go. There you go. Oh! See everyone in the Holy middle. shit! I love the reaction. I love this reaction. A lot of people don't know about advanced UAVs. In the building. In the building. This guy's parachuting what? in. How's he moving is he, like that? Is he flying? He's flying, yeah. He's definitely parachuting. Get ready, Arjun. Oh, he's in the car. He's parachuting yeah. over on the roofs next to you guys, so you guys could leave and go push him on the rooftops. Now, we'll say this, right? I will say this. I, for one, probably wouldn't push the guy parachuting in. Not from, like, I'm a scared reason, but I would rather utilize my advanced UAV to push multiple kills than to chase down one kill, and by the time I get to him, the UAV is gone. Also, when you have advanced UAV, you want to mark you and your teammate, if you're playing duos, trios, or squads, you guys want to kind of sync your marks and mark every area that there's a team at. So if this was quads, I'd mark one, my teammate would mark the other, my other teammate would mark one, and my teammate would mark the next one. You want to mark the next compound so when you finish one fight, you can go on to the next one and get kill after kill after kill after kill. That was fucking mental. Yeah. The advanced UAVs are a very <laughs> underutilized <laughs> thing, and honestly, I just don't think that many people know about them. Roof, up there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Ready? Shooting. Yeah. Lost him. Oh. Nice. Very nice wow. sink. Very nice kill. Right up there. The guy in this building, remember? His body just rolls off the roof. I love that. Yo, his body just fell down. Yeah. Yeah, that was him. All right, so we're looking for the next enemies. We know there's a lot of teams here because of the advanced UAV. Come down, come down, Arjun, come down. Because you're a bit. Now, they bought out their loadout drop. They bought their loadout drop, and he's getting shot at, but we'll cover that in a second. So, we know there's a team here. We know there's enemies here. We know there's multiple teams in this vicinity. Somewhere in this compound, there's another team probably watching you as well, right? There's an advantage to be on the high ground, but there's also a disadvantage if you put yourself in a bad position. So, basically, when you have a roof like this, instead of walking over one side and putting your full body in view of the enemy, you just want to head glitch it. And a lot of people don't know what I mean by head glitching. And basically, what head glitching is is if you were to stay on the back side of the roof and peek your gun up, your gun would be able to shoot the enemy and get some kills. However, the enemy, when he's looking at you, all he's gonna see is the top of your head. It's how Call of Duties have been developed for the past almost 20 years. It's how all Call of Duties will forever be. So make sure you're utilizing any kind of ridge to just barely peek over and get some shots in the enemy because it's gonna make it harder for him to shoot at you. You're able to get them down. However, you did take a lot of... Look at your health. Look at he's your gonna health. Rez, he's gonna... So if you were to head glitch this tippity top right here, uh, you would have been able to get the down, and he probably only would have broken one plate, if any at all. Then you could have instantly, you and your teammate could have instantly pushed him and gotten a double kill while he's going for the res. But now you're in a position where you're plating up, he's probably getting res, and then it's going to be a 2v2 fight, and they know exactly where you're at. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. He's down there. No, the res. <sighs> But only you listened. You never listened to me. I see him. We got that load out now. Oh, I had no fucking. I couldn't reload, and one was behind. All right, so I'm not taking any sides, right? Communication's key. If your teammate, for whatever reason, is telling you no, don't fight. Just don't do it, right? You're, you're going to have to sync up because the enemy and his teammate were definitely synced together, and that's how, that's how they killed you guys. So I agree. I would have jumped down there and pushed him together for sure. But your teammate is in the middle of looting a building. You kind of jumped down there, even though he said no, jumped down there anyway and tried to 1v2 the enemies because you got the down and you got greedy. That's not a bad thing. I do it all the time, and I pay for it too. That's why I'm making these videos. So you guys don't pay for the mistakes that I make, right? So in that situation... Um, I definitely would have head glitched the entire thing, gotten the down, synced myself with the teammate. I would have had full health. He would have had full health. We would have pushed the enemy from two different angles and gotten the kills. But unfortunately, because y'all are out of sync, it just didn't happen. Yeah, was All right, guys, here we are redeploying. I'm kind of the same way. A lot of people would be like, I'm going to go for the loadout stash and just regain. I personally am a very, like, vengeful person. 
If I can go back and kill the guys that killed me and get my loot back, that's a win-win. Yes, I don't recommend doing this because they're probably still there camping your bodies. But from how I play, I'm going to go back. Now, you don't want to use this hang time. Hit the ground and hit it fast. You can cut your parachute well before you actually did, right? Um, if they were close by, that would have been an easy kill for them. So if you're coming back down from the gulag or you're jumping off the building, you want to either A, pull your chute at the last second, or B, cut it a little bit earlier. You can still cut it about 10, 15 feet in the air before you actually take any damage. All right, so Duck Dude is by himself, and he's trying to get enough money to get his teammate back. So we've got a flag objective. Now, you can go for the most wanted bounty, but remember, the most wanted bounty is going to alert you to the entire map. While you're doing a flag objective, you're only going to be alerted by the immediate surroundings. Um, but I would make my way there and make my way there quickly. Granted, I like the fact that he's checking the doors and checking the alleys and the holes in the wall, making sure nobody's following him or nobody has an angle on him. But make sure you're doing this quickly, guys. You want to get in, get out, get your guy back, and buy. One thing that's unfortunate right here is when you get the flag objective, even if you get the money, there's no buy station close to you. So you're going to have to leave this area. You guys think doing a flag is not going to alert anybody. You're living in a whole different planet. So depending on where this buy station is, depending on where it says on the map, um, that's what we'll talk about, what rotation I would recommend you guys do. All right, so we've got enough money to get the buy back, and let's look at the map. So where would you go? Well, there's two scenarios. One, assuming you're a confident player and you like to solo duo, go to Storage Town. The buy station's over there, and you're going to have some teams over there as well that you can kill. If not teams, at least one team. There's going to be somebody there. So you could go there. But if you're not confident 1v2-ing teams or even 1v3-ing or 1v4-ing, I would make my way to this buy station that, he, that is in front of him. Um, granted, the apartment complex to the left is going to be a very dangerous, very dangerous thing to contest. So let's see what happens. If there's a team on top of apartments, they already know you're there because they saw your flag, because they, just, because they saw that you were doing the flag objective, um, and they're going to probably shoot at you. But because you haven't gotten shot at yet, I guess there's nobody there, so you're probably safe to buy. Remember, guys, flag objectives reveal the next circle. It's a nice little cheat code to have. If you guys want to know where to get positioned and how to rotate the circle, that is the perfect thing to do. All right. Jump in, jump out, get the buy off, roll out. I love it. Don't waste your time. Don't sit there and think about it. Don't pray to the box. Just get in and get out. Get your teammate and go. I think he just got sniped at. If I'm not mistaken. Now, this late in the game... So, where do we go from here? Well, when you're at this compound up here, buying your teammate back, you were getting sniped at, right? Um, you could have been getting sniped from train station. However, when you were over here, you were still getting sniped at, and this hill right here blocks train station. So, in my head, train station probably wasn't the team shooting at you. I would imagine there's a sniper over here in this compound, which there usually are. Um, so, that's probably where the immediate threat's going to be. You do have a search objective you can go grab. You're pretty late in the game. I uh, really wouldn't prioritize search objectives this far into the game, but you already have it. Go ahead and do it if you if you feel comfortable. So I would go ahead and go for the search objective, at least get some kind of cash flow going, and hopefully kill the asshole that's been sniping at us for the past five minutes. All right, so now we've got money. They went ahead and did their objectives. They went ahead and looted a lot of other things, too, that we skipped through. Um, but they almost have $20,000. There's an enemy going for the buy station. Make sure you're going for your, your hits, right? Don't spam the fire button too much if you can't hit accurate shots. Slow down your gunfire when you're using single-fire weapons if, again, you're an inaccurate shot. Nothing against it, but you want to start slow and speed it up as you get better, as you get more accurate. Now, the enemy bought their teammate back. And he dipped off. He's going to go get safe. No doubt about it, right? Um, don't hawk him down. Don't get distracted from the fact that you want to buy an advanced UAV or some self-reses and a UAV. Make sure you're buying, right? Use the buy while it's safe. All right, I like the fact that they went back to the buy station. They went ahead and focused up. They see there's a guy in this building right here. You've got two C4s also, guys. Remember, utilize your C4. You know there's a guy in this building right here. There's no reason not to spam a C4 in there. If you don't get a hit marker, throw another one on the roof and see where he's at. There's no reason for you guys to be focused on this buy station when this guy right here is just peek out the window and get the kill off, right? You're in a very vulnerable position right now. Very vulnerable position. Arjun. I'm coming, I'm coming. He's gone out the other door, gone out the other door, gone out the other door. He's going out, outside, outside, I know, Arjun. I know, I know. He's in there. All right, we've got the kill off. That was very dangerous. I probably wouldn't have put myself in a corner. 
I would have worked the building trying to listen to my teammates call outs and got the kill um, before he had an opportunity to even break my armor. Um, however, the fact that you were next to your teammate definitely prevented the enemy from coming in and getting an easy execution. So again, it's all situational type based. Again, it's all situational based, but I don't mind the fact that he stayed in there with his teammate. Again, I wouldn't have sat in the corner. I would have worked the corners. I would have worked the edges, but I wouldn't just sat with my back to the corner. Yeah, I've got seven now. Good. Oh yeah, shit. I haven't, I haven't, we ain't got ghosts. All right, so from this standpoint, I would work my way on the roof of train station. It's the better vantage point right now. It's the highest part of the map with the exception of the two apartments in front of them. Um, but that's exactly where I would go. Yes, there's a helicopter up there. Yes, there's going to be other enemies in there. Yes, there will be enemies on the staircase as well. But again, it'll be a perfect opportunity to get some more kills and put yourself in a better position. All right, so the circle is rotated. And again, if we would have gotten the roof, we could have killed everybody up here, hopefully. Uh, and then we'd have the high ground. We would have a perfect vantage point on the entire mountain. Granted, there's a lot of trees and stuff like that. But again, you're in a better position. Um, that's where I would want to be at. If I was not if I was them right now, this is where I would be. But this is where they're at. So this is also a great position to kind of catch people coming out of this compound up here. The people who are on the roof are going to bail off. You can shoot them out of the sky. That's awesome. Anyone crossing the street, easy kills as well. Um, but I would not make my way across. I would stay on this side of the map playing exactly where I'm at. And trying to pick people as they come out oh, fuck me. all right there's a staircase in this little area to his right so they could come up here and third party the team that just got res so there's a guy in here who just got res whip out your smg go up here push them and kill them um going for the headshots i love it look right here i want to go ahead and throw out he had all of his armor broken and instead of pushing up to get the execute or pushing up to get the next kill he fell back a little bit to give himself time to plate up so his teammate could push up who was fully plated and finish the fight Guys, there's no shame in bailing from a fight if you're not plated. I would probably play the roof. They're bailing out of the roof for whatever reason. I didn't hear their comms that much because I was too busy talking. Uh, but they did decide to bail from the roof. The problem with the position they're in is they're going to be sitting here shooting at the hill. While they're shooting at the other enemies on the hill, people on the top can just jump on the ledge, look down, and shoot you in the head. So again, you're in a very vulnerable position. I don't like this. I prefer the high ground. That's exactly where I would be at. Because you're out positioned, there is zero shame in playing slow. If I was right here right now, I would not be shooting at everything to reveal my position. Granted, if I thought an enemy spotted me, I'm definitely going to defend myself and, and ball out and see what happens. But if you're safe and no one knows where you're at, play it slow until stay at, until the team above you out positions themselves and you can come in from behind them and get the kills. Yeah, see them, guys. We've got more left. They're fighting. It's me, you, and them, them two guys, and one guy, I think. There's a there. guy on the hill. I saw one guy on the hill. There's two, there's two, there's two. Right there. There's two on the hill, and one up here. Don't shoot yet, don't shoot yet. He looks like a monkey. Oh, the gun. Got a right shield. All right, so we know one guy just jumped off of the roof, and we can't see him. So, because we can't see where that guy jumped to, do not leave your hard cover because you could get shot from wherever that guy landed. I think they went okay. And just like that, he outpositioned himself. He left hard cover, not knowing where the enemy was at. And his teammate was fortunately able to get the kill. All right, we're now in a 2v2 situation. He's got res. He needs to pop his plates as soon as possible. While he's popping his plates, Rick should be looking around the immediate area. I would assume these guys are on the hill. We saw them earlier. Unfortunately, the circle has shifted the opposite direction. So now you have to move to the enemy team. There we have a riot shield. Guys! Don't be like Riot Shield Betty, right? Riot Shield Betty, stupid. We don't like Riot Shield Betty. They're dumb, right? People who utilize Riot Shields as an everyday tactic, stop doing that, please, guys. You're not, you're, you're not doing anything for yourself. You're not practicing your gameplay. You want to help your teammate. If you have a Riot Shield out like this, you're not helping your teammate. You're just being an asshole. Riot Shields. All right, so you're also getting sniped from the left, so you got to be very careful. He's going to push out of cover while he just got sniped at. Very ballsy. I don't know if I would do that play, um, but fortunately, because Riot Shield Betty is too busy, you know, using his Riot Shield, he doesn't practice his gunplay. Um, your boy Duck is able to go ahead and get a 1v1 kill. And at the same time, Rick downs his teammate. And GG's, they won. Let's go. Let's go. We got win. Let's go. Let's go, baby. I love it. Look, that, was, that, that worked out. The enemy team played that so terribly wrong. And again, I put the blame on the Riot Shield Betty. Guys, stop it. The riot shield is funny to use from time to time, but don't 
if you're not good at gunplay, don't just resort to the riot shield. Practice. Who cares if you die? If you keep using the riot shield, how are you ever going to get better at the game? What, what that enemy team should have done was they should have both stayed on the hill, the high ground, on the two different locations like they were at. Riot shield Betty should have used his weapon instead, putting shots on our team, while his teammate was at a different angle, putting shots on the team as well. That would have made it impossible for Duck and Rick to come out of cover, work their way up a hill, out of a very bad position, and get a win. They should not have won that fight at all. But when it comes to this game, adapting is crucial. Even if you're going for one thing, if the situation changes, don't just focus on that one thing. Don't just focus on that one kill. Don't just focus on that one objective. Change your gameplay. Change your momentum. Change your gameplay with how the momentum shifts in the game. Don't always stay tunnel vision. Always avoid being tunnel vision on kills and being tunnel visioned on different objectives. Duck and Rick, thank you for submitting me this gameplay. I really appreciate it. This is a blast to analyze. A lot of lessons to be learned in this gameplay, not just from you guys, but from the enemies as well. The last team on the hill right there, they should have won. They had y'all gate kept. The circle was rotating in their favor. And because they decided to be a little riot shield Betty and be funny, it cost them the game. So I hope they're laughing now. Um, good play on your part for pushing across. Y'all jumped out of position at the end right there. You kind of had to. I, for one, would have probably played the wall trying to get some picks. Um, but fortunately, it worked out because, well, they were just uncoordinated. Again, guys, this game is ever changing and you always have to adapt, not just with the updates, not just with new metas, but as the circles change and as enemies rotate in different positions. Not one video is going to tell you guys exactly what to do in that exact situation. Literally, this situation could have been changed if the circle would have rotated behind our team. Then our team would have been the ones gatekeeping and the whole strategy of that would have changed. But if you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. Join the Wolfpack today. Also, again, don't forget to join our Discord where you can submit your gameplay if you would like for me to analyze it on the channel. And follow us over on Twitch. The link to both of those will be in the description below. Y'all have a good one and good luck in Warzone. Guys, thank you for tuning in. I really hope you enjoyed the gameplay, guys. I really hope these lessons are helping you guys. If y'all want to check out some other videos, make sure you click these links over here. And again, subscribe by clicking the link below. Y'all have a good one. And I'll see you in the next one.